Sierra, and hello and welcome again, everybody, to our uh, presentation today. We would like to begin with a land acknowledgement. So Brock University acknowledges the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples, and acknowledging reminds us that our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and friendship of Indigenous people. And we're lucky to be gathering here today on National Indigenous Peoples Day um, to recognize and celebrate the cultures and contributions of the First Nations, Métis and Inuit Indigenous peoples of Canada. So again, thank you everyone for joining us here today. We want to begin with a bit of a pulse check just to see where everybody is at when it comes to resumes and cover letters. So since you've been able to access the chat and let us know where you're coming from, um, I'd like to invite you to pick an emoji that represents maybe how you're feeling. If it's a smiley emoji, you're very confident with cover letters and resumes, or um, maybe it's a, a frowning emoji or a bit of worried of an emoji. Maybe you're not feeling super confident in what you're doing. So I invite you to uh, share an emoji that you think is what what's going to represent maybe how you're feeling when it comes to resume and cover letters. And I know when I was in a position as many of you here today, maybe you are a little bit unsure. Uh, maybe you are feeling before. a little unsure with uh, where you are at. Maybe to leave uh, a message, wait you know, for as the somebody, uh, sorry, there we go. There's my did. Um, when I was in this position, I was a little unsure, or maybe I had an idea because I'd created a few, but I hadn't necessarily fine-tuned it, and it's a, it's a big part. So we're seeing um, some people who are feeling maybe a little bit more confident than others, um, but that's great. Everyone is here to learn a little bit further today. So let's get into maybe some of the uh, objectives or maybe what you can take out of our presentation today. So just to start, sorry, um, we want to help you uh, we want to help you understand the purpose of a resume and cover letter and how having solid documents is going to help accelerate the processes and progress that you're making in your job search. Also understanding how the different formats of the documents, there's very specific methods, especially if this is maybe your first time completing a resume and cover letter to apply for jobs in Canada. Um, it might look different from maybe what you have experienced elsewhere. And then how to organize this information and translate your skills and how to tailor the documents that you have to jobs that you are applying to. That's a really important skill that we're happy to help you with today. And then finally, a bit of an overview of Career Zone for alumni specifically, what sort of access that you will have and how you can use the tools um, being a part of the Brock community. All right, and I'll pass it off to Victoria to start us off with the purpose of a professional resume. Thank you, Sam. Um, so we want to go over, you know, what is the purpose of a professional resume? resume. Uh, firstly, we want to highlight your most relevant skills, your skill set, and your accomplishment. Um, you know, we want to highlight what are your unique skills that you'll be able to leverage yourself to an employer with. Um, we want to identify your value to the employer or to the reader, and it's a living document to share your story. So as your career progresses, that document is going to progress with it as well. Um, so here are some of the resume fundamentals that we'll be touching on today, um, from formatting standards to strategic organization and how to make your content captivating. Um, so with your formatting, we want to make sure that we are hitting all of these different components. Uh, first, making sure that your resume is clean and clear. Uh, we want to allow for white space, but making sure that all of the content that is provided on your resume um, is in a format that is easy to follow. It's organized, linear. Um, when someone is looking at your content, you want to make sure that all of your information is easy to read and find. Um, that way they get to know you a little better and have an idea of what your experience looks like. Um, 
different industries look for different aspects on a resume, uh, but a tasteful use of color is is always a nice touch if that's something that you're comfortable with um, and want to make sure you uh, you're using that in a way that doesn't take away from the content on your resume. Consistency. Uh, consistency is important um, for your headers, your spacing, the dates that you've included on your resume. It allows the reader to find all your information uh, quickly and easily. Uh, contact information, you want to make sure that that is up to date. Um, that way the employer is able to contact you about any um, uh, opportunities that are coming your way and you want to make sure that that is uh, in a place that is easy to find. Um, so at the top of your resume is, is what we look for there. Um, dates are in a reverse chronological order if you use are using a chronological resume um, and this is typically the format we see for students and new graduates um, and it just allows your most recent experiences to be highlighted at the top of your resume followed by um, your least recent um, experiences the style of your format and um, your point uh, your font size is is important to make sure that it stays consistent throughout the document um, but it also is clear and clean um, easy to read it's all about you know making sure that the document is um, is reader friendly uh, one thing that we always recommend is to use a Word document and stay away from templates. I know they're very tempting to use, um, you know, just inputting your information, but you do risk, um, you know, having that format be adjusted if you do convert it to a PDF or if you submit it um, through a tracking system. Sometimes the content just gets adjusted. So you want to make sure that you are um, not using a template and creating your document from scratch um, just so that you can make sure that it all um, it all stays stays uh, consistent when you do submit your resume and your references. Um, we typically, uh, uh, sorry, we typically suggest that students and new graduates um, include references on a separate page and there you want to make sure that that format follows um, similar to your resume. So you'd have the same header as your resume and cover letter for that consistency, as well as um, stating the individual that you're using as your reference, your relationship, and their con uh, contact information. So um, given that information that I just shared with you, we do have um, a little um, a little blurb of someone's work experience that is posted here, um, but there are a few mistakes that we have included. So I'm gonna give you guys just a few minutes to take a look at this example and in the comments or in the chat, if you'd like to include what some mistakes are that you're seeing formatting wise, um, we can go over those as well. So yeah, right off the bat, font size is not consistent, um, which is so important to formatting. We're not seeing consistency in dates. Um, so you're seeing the year that they started, but not the month. And um, that could leave a lot of questions for employers. Uh, different bullet points is great. There's, we're lacking that consistency in size and in style. Um, yeah job experiences uh, and bullet points. Um, we're seeing inconsistency in the font. Uh, yes, it is an in reverse chronological order, um, which, you know, we want to we want to be able to highlight your most recent experiences. Um, the columns don't line up. We are seeing that the dates for the first uh, First experience is indented while the other uh, date is on the right hand side. Um, 
Great job. Yeah, so we do that. That formatting is very important to making sure that the document does look appealing and clean and highlights all your best information. OK, we're going to talk a little bit more now about content organization. So what is important is to lead with the most relevant sections uh, on your resume. And this can be flexible depending on the industry uh, that you're applying to, maybe the work that you're applying to. And you'll see and we'll go into a little bit more detail about how to choose which sections are going to need to go on the top of your resume versus maybe uh, at the bottom on that second page. So like we said, order matters. You want to lead with your most relevant experiences. So typically for anybody uh, in the new alumni stage or our current students, you're going to want to lead with your education. This is going to be um, one of the most important sections that you have at the top because it shows employers um, the minimum qualifications that you have. Now, if you are updating your resume and it's been a little while, maybe you have your high school still on your resume, you can feel free to remove that. It's a given understanding that you've gone on now to university, that you've met that high school qualification. So you're gonna wanna put your top educational experience. Now, if you've done college in addition to university or you have more than one degree, you can list those uh, um, as well in that educational piece. It's just high school we recommend removing at this point. Now, if you're looking at the education that's listed here, you can see the full degree is written there on the top. That is very important to highlight that specifically. And then there's information such as the location and the institution below. And that's the format you're going to want to follow when it comes to listing your education. Um, and you're going to put your most recent degree. So it's that reverse chronological order that we talked about um, on top. So like I said, if you've obtained more than one university degree, you're going to put the one you've completed most recently at the top of that section. So even within the sections, you want to ensure that the order is following proper formatting. And you can see there that header that uh, Victoria was talking about, ensuring consistency listed. Now we're going to keep on building. So after we have education, um, it's going to change, like we mentioned, based on the industries and positions that you are applying to. And there are different strategic headings. Maybe you already have some of these on a draft of your resume, um, or maybe some of these are new based on the experiences that you've been building in your past or recent years. And you can see some of the other headings that will be listed on your resume. So uh, relevant work experience or work experience. The difference between these two categories is if you're applying to a job that is maybe very specific to an industry or the role is specific to um, a type of experience that you might have had in the past, and you have other additional experiences, you can divide those sections. So um, I believe Sierra, you mentioned uh, a question about um, chronological and reverse chronological order. So if you wanted to highlight certain experiences that are more relevant to this role, but maybe you've had other experiences in between, and you want to ensure those are listed on top, you can list relevant experience at the top under education and have those uh, work experiences or um, academic projects that are very relevant to the role that you're applying to listed there, and then additional work experiences um, in the work experience section. Other areas include volunteer experience, academic projects. Um, if you have studied at Brock, like everybody here has, you've completed experiential education courses at one point in your degree. These are great ways to talk about those experiences that you've gained in your undergraduate degree and market those on your resume if you're worried about not having years of experience in other areas. So you can highlight those. Um, different involvement areas, technical and language skills, all of these are different subjects that you can talk about on your resume if you have the experiences that fit within. You don't have to include all of these and I'd recommend if you only have a single experience that might fit under one of these you can either choose to exclude it from your resume or see if there is a more broad heading that you can integrate those into. Um, and we talked about changing the order based on different roles. So if you, let's say, studied computer science at the university, technical skills are going to be highly relevant for roles that you're applying to that might be in analytics or in coding. So having those technical skills listed below education is great. 
where if you are applying to a job where maybe work experience is more valued, let's say you're applying to a job in business and you've taken some co-op courses, having work experience listed under education is going to be an important balance there to show the experiences that you have that are relevant to the areas that you're applying to. Same with certifications. If you are coming from a role of maybe an applied health background and you have some certi cert certificates that you've completed in your studies and those are relevant to the jobs you're applying to, again, listing those under education is great to change it up. And you're not stuck to one format when it comes to building your resume, one order, sorry, I should say. Um, you can change this as you continue on with your job search process. You might find more success by having work experience higher than technical skills. Um, and if you're finding you're not getting a lot of interest in from employers, try switching them and putting technical skills first. So there's flexibility in this area. Um, so it's good to, to play around and maybe do some research into the jobs that you are applying to and what's more uh, requested by employers. And some of the content standards to look at as well. Like we mentioned, you want to list those more relevant experiences first, um, having them in reverse chronological order. That is just showing what you have done most recently versus some of those older roles. You want to use bullet points uh, for each one of your statements, and we'll talk about building out those statements in a moment here. Um, you want to ensure that it's written in third person, so you're not using I statements. Um, and that also ties into the active and passive voice and the accurate use of past, past tense and present tense. Um, an active voice is more captivating for the reader. So ensuring that when you are completing your sentence, you're using those active verbs. And if you are currently in a role, you can use present tense, but for all other experiences, you want to use past tense on your resume. Um, it's going to read much nicer for the person who is uh, learning about that, but it's also going to just look more professionally done. Uh, Victoria also mentioned using clear and concise language, which is important. Um, and another thing, when you're building out your resume, if you have many similar roles uh, that you've worked on or volunteer experiences or whatever that might look like, you want to pay attention to avoiding repetitive content. So is there some skills that were unique to this role that you completed, uh, role A opposed to role B, even though they're very similar in work? Um, if you can highlight different experiences, you're going to get more out of your resume um, and show better showcase the breadth of skills that you have gained uh, in the different work that you are doing. And I'm going to pass it back to Victoria to talk about captivating content. Thank you. Um, yeah, so when you're writing your resume, resume, you want to make sure you can identify your skills and qualifications um, and be able to connect them to the job requirements that an employer is looking for. Um, in this example, the job uh, qualification is strong communication skills. So we want to um, review the description to determine uh, what forms of communication are they looking for or what forms of communication do you have, um, oral, written, um, you know, and how are we going to highlight that in your resume? Uh, we want to also think about who are you communicating with? Um, can you identify the stakeholders uh, that you have had interactions with or um, that are going to be transferable to the type of job that you're applying to. Um, how are you communicating? Is it through reports? Are you in meetings? Are you in courses? Um, has it been through social media, or press releases, emails? We want to really dissect what the job qualification is looking for and break that down um, to the skills that you have so that we are able to um, think about the skills that you have and how you've used them in previous positions. So uh, here we have an example of uh, breaking down the qualifications. Um, so we want to think about the duties that you've completed in, in uh, your position. So whether it's assisting customers, um, communicating with customers, and connect them to the accomplishments uh, of that position. So one thing that would really set your resume apart is providing not only um, information about 
what your job requirements were, um, but also what you were able to accomplish them. And this is kind of that results piece that Sam will give you a little more information about in a second. Um, so yeah, in, in this example, uh, assisted customers is the duties and then um, the accomplishment goes into a little bit more detail. So um, buying decisions and increased department sales goals, that shows that you go a, a step above um, from just doing your, your role that's intended. Um, so yes, here we want to be able to communicate that impact of your job. So we recommend talking, uh, including car statements into your resume, um, which consist of challenge, action, and result. The challenge is talking about what was your responsibility in that position and what were your tasks. The action is what steps did you take to meet that challenge and what was involved in completing your task. And the result is that important piece that really sets you apart from other applicants. Um, and what was the impact of your actions and the outcome. And this doesn't always have to be, um, you know, a numerical value that you can attribute to your work, but it can be, um, you know, describing uh, an outcome that you've accomplished in your in your role. Awesome. We use car statements a lot over in career education. They really are the best way for you to take the experiences that you've had and easily translate them so that the employer has an idea of what you've worked on, but also you as the person who is seeking a job know what sort of skills um, and what sort of accomplishments and stories you have. So when you are sitting in that interview and they ask you, can you give us an example of when you've done this or demonstrated this, you have these stories in your uh, Rolodex that you can discuss discuss a little bit more in detail. So we're going to go through an example of a car statement and Victoria um, did a great job explaining and breaking down the, the acronym itself, the challenge action and the result. Um, so an example here is improved customer satisfaction by communicating in a professional and calm manner to solve issues of unsatisfied customers. This is a great example of what a car statement can look like. You can see here that they have led with the result. And so as an employer reading, um, I immediately know what you've accomplished in your role and then how you got to that accomplishment and, and the steps that you have taken. So we're going to look at another example here. So this is an example of somebody's resume. And you can see here they're a communications assistant. They have promoted department events, created marketing materials, and assisted with event coordination. Now, um, in the chat, can you let me know what the result was from uh, this person's experience? If you see the result listed there, can you let me know uh, what they have accomplished in this role? It might be a bit of a trick question. Um, as you can see here, this is very minimum. And if your resume looks like that, that's okay. That's why you're here to learn a little bit more about how we can evolve our resume. Um, but let's take a look at if we applied that car statement method to this resume, um, if we can pull out what that result might look like. So here we have those exact same tasks, but now we put it through that car statement lens. Um, can anybody let me know maybe what the results were for this person, what they accomplished in their role as a communication as assistant? Yeah, increased atten attendance, design materials. As you can see, uh, this example is leading with the results for these statements. So we know that they've increased attendance at mall events, and they've even been able to give a numerical value. So um, by 25%. And this is great if you're looking to really enhance the statements that you have on your resume. If you have any numerics that you can add, this is the greatest place to do so. So if you've worked on a project and you know the direct impact or result from that project, including maybe percentages or how much you've increased sales, or um, that could also look like uh, decreasing dissatisfaction or those sorts of things, um, improving KPIs, whatever that might be. Um, 
including that into these statements is going to be a great place to do so. Maybe you've worked on a class project and you don't necessarily have the results of after you've done your service learning project, you don't know what the organization has done thus far. You can include also your intent intended uh, results. So if your goal was to reduce the amount of uh, waste that an organization is putting out in the service learning project that you've completed, you can state um, with the aim to reduce waste in XYZ. Um, but this is a great example of how you can lead with results, but also follow that car statement method to really um, let employers know what the value is that you are bringing from the experiences that you've had. And we've talked about results. We really encourage you to focus on results. Here are some of the words that you might see um, if you were to post result-based uh, statements. Also on Career Zone under the student resource section, you actually can find different action words um, and different uh, result-based words. So if you're looking for how to reword your resume, this is a great uh, tool that you have through Career Zone. I'll pass to Victoria, who's going to go over some of those common resume mistakes that we see from students. Thank you. Um, so yeah, here we've listed just some of the uh, resume mistakes that we see most commonly. So inconsistent formatting is one of those things that we see often, and uh, we really stress that students um, really pay attention to, and we saw that in, in the examples, um, too much information. So as Sam had mentioned before, um, if you still have your high school um, information on there or education on your resume, um, that almost becomes irrelevant at this point since you are in university or you have graduated. So there's content like that that can be removed from the resume um, and making sure that we stick to that two page length, which is what we see um, as standard in the industry. Um, and yeah, just making sure that your experiences that you have lift, uh, listed stay relevant to the jobs that you are applying for. And if you have a variety of different experiences, maybe that's where you tailor your resume to the type of job that you're applying for. Um, Want to make sure that we are um, avoiding first person writing um, and generic applications. Uh, again, making sure that the resume that you are um, applying with is tailored to a specific um, industry or to a specific role um, in mind. That way you are highlighting your most relevant experiences that will showcase your skills and qualifications, um, which touches on uh, adding skill words with no context. We want to make sure that we are providing context to our document and to our skills, backing them up, um, which we can do through car statements. Um, we can do that through including different aspects of our resume. So whether it's technical skills um, or workshops, um, any professional development, that information will back up the skills that you've included on your resume. And most importantly, uh, attention to detail is so important to avoid any careless spelling or grammatical errors. Um, definitely something we want to avoid and just be very careful when reading through your resume to make sure that we are avoiding this issue. So here we have an example of what our chronological resume template would look like. Um, so we can see uh, right from the get go, everything is very clear um, and concise. It's super easy to read, whether you're looking for someone's education, work experience, um, or even their contact information. Their first and last name is in um, in bigger letters to at the top of their resume, um, followed by any contact information that an employer would need, um, followed with education. And for a lot of new grads and students, that education piece is always going to be at the top of your resume um, because it is the most relevant for uh, for employers to see at this time in your career. Um, your work experience and volunteer experience both follow that same format um, and again you're tailoring your resume to what you what experiences you think um, you'd like to highlight for that particular employer 
on the second page of this um, resume, we see that they've included any professional development. Uh, so whether it's workshops or training that they've completed, um, any clubs or memberships that they uh, have been a part of. And this is a good time to reflect on your um, time at Brock University and other experiences that you've had outside of the classroom that you could also include on your resume. Um, if you've received any awards either in the community or uh, from courses or school, that's a great place to add, um, add in as well. And it backs up those skills that you've included on your resume. And any special skills, technical skills can be included there as well. Um, and then references available on, upon request is great to add in. And uh, as we had mentioned before, the reference page is a separate document that you would um, include with your job application if that is something that the employer asks for, or you would send it to the um, employer once they do ask for references. Okay, excellent. So that concludes um, the resume portion of our uh, presentation today. So if you do have any questions about um, resume formatting or building or anything regarding creating that resume that'll get you job ready, please feel free to post it in the chat and, and we can help you answer those as well. And uh, for the second half of today's Lunch and Learn, we're going to talk a little bit more about cover letters. Um, if you are not familiar with cover letters, we're going to dive into a little bit more about why they're important um, and why as a Brock graduate or, or current Brock student, you should always be completing a cover letter, how it will help you stand out in your application. So again, feel free to put any questions that you might have regarding resumes in the chat so you don't forget, um, and we can answer those at the end of the presentation as well. So let's talk a little bit more about cover letters. A cover letter is important because it says why you want a certain job. And we'll talk about the format and where to put all the information, but you should be creating a cover letter for each job that you apply to. As your resume may not change much from job to job that you're interested in, your cover letter is going to change for every job that you're applying to. And it sounds intimidating. Um, and I certainly remember in my job search grind, this was my least favorite part, is creating a new cover letter for each role. But we're here to give you the tools that you need. So for each time you go to write a cover letter, um, it becomes a little bit more second nature for you. And you can create these with a little bit more ease once you know the bones and the structure um, and ways to make this process a little bit less painful. You also want to use your cover letter to tell the employer how your skills and experiences are relevant. And this isn't a duplicate of your resume, but it's more so highlighting some of the best parts that are listed on your resume. You're gonna make a link between yourself and the company that you are applying to and highlight those transferable skills that uh, you, know, you hear everybody talking about. And then finally, uh, the role of the cover letter is to convince the employer to turn the page. And so it's gonna be very compelling and captivating and will give you some uh, information on how to do so uh, when you're building out your cover letter. So some of the formatting tips, your cover letter is going to be a single page um, in full block format. So we wanna use up as much of that space as we can. You're gonna match the header that would be on your resume for your cover letter. And then we're gonna start. I prefer the four paragraph format method when we're building out a cover letter and we'll go through what each one of those paragraphs look like. But on career zone, there are some different processes. So if an employer asks for a bullet point cover letter, um, there's some tips on how to build one of those those out uh, or if you feel like you want to include more or less information on your cover letter as you start to do these more you can check out some different methods on career zone however we're going to talk about the four paragraph method today um, and that's going to get all the information that you need uh, to the employer uh, formatting some more formatting tips a personalized introduction to you and your background and we'll break down each one of these paragraphs and where that information lies you want to be strategic. So I did mention, you don't want to rehash your resume. However, you want to highlight some of your best experiences that are found on your resume. And as these are tailored to each position that you're applying to, it'll be tailored to the company and the hiring manager as well. Remember, this is a letter, a cover letter. Uh, so it's going to be addressed to a specific person. You'll include a handwritten signature below. Um, and that's a lot easier to do uh, 
than uh, you might think. You can just use paint, use your trackpad or your mouse, build it at your signature, and you can include that into each one of your documents. Um, and you want to ensure those similar formatting um, requirements that we have for resumes of the header and the font consistencies between your resume and cover letter, uh, just so that everything looks like a well-tailored package. Okay, and Victoria's gonna talk a little bit more about the T analysis. So the TN analysis is a great way um, to identify priority items in the posting that the employer has um, highlighted and um, connecting them to your own experiences and skills. So one way to do this is list the employer's requirements on the left um, and list your uh, validating experiences on the right. Um, and this is a great opportunity to pull out the main themes of the position. So you wanna take a look at, um, you know, the skills, uh, education experience that you have and how they connect to the job description um, and the different qualifications and um, and responsibilities that the employer would expect you to um, to take on. Um, so this is what that T analysis would look like um, on the left hand side we have the employer needs so they are um, going to be looking for someone who has facilitated workshops and we want to cross reference those to your qualifications um, so if in this example uh, facilitated health and safety presentations in their last position um, so that correlates perfectly and it shows that they have the qualifications that that employer is looking for um, if they're looking for analytical skills you want to think about out, okay, how um, how how have I um, used this skill or gained this skill in previous ex uh, positions? Um, and in this example, they accurately entered data into government systems. Um, so you are cross-referencing your qualifications to the needs uh, and pulling out the main themes of that job description um, from from the from the employer. Fantastic. So um, the introductory paragraph of your cover letter is going to address the letter to a specific person. So sometimes this might take a little bit of time to find out who exactly you are um, going to be addressing to if it's not posted on the job description. Sometimes it takes a little bit of sleuthing to through LinkedIn or through the company website uh, to get a better idea of who you're or who you're addressing it to. And this um, just adds in a little bit of a personal touch and shows that you can go an extra step to um, to get the information that is uh, required. And we also, we also want to avoid the to whom it may concern, as that might seem as a little bit cold um, and uh, yeah, just an, a little bit of a cold um, start to your cover letter. In that introductory paragraph, we want to highlight why you're writing to this particular person or to this uh, to this company, um, and how you heard about the opening. If you heard about it through LinkedIn or through the company website, or maybe you have been referred to by someone who works there currently, that is something um, valuable to add to that introductory paragraph. Um, be sure to include the current level of education, uh, so the year, program, and that your school, or if you're a new graduate, you want to make sure that you are highlighting that in the introductory paragraph. And this is really where you're going to spark the interest of the reader with your top highlights. Um, so maybe you want to highlight that you have experience in this industry or that you have um, certain skills and qualifications that that employer is looking for, or um, maybe this is where you pull on the themes that you have um, been able to um, decipher from that T analysis, and you include that in your introductory paragraph, just to kind of give that employer a little bit more information about you, and you want to make sure that they keep reading on after reading that introductory paragraph. It sparks their interest there. 
Yeah, that's a great point, Victoria. Another thing when you are building out this resume, and this is specific to um, the alumni that we have joining us here today, if the job posting mentions anything regarding new grad, so we're looking for a new grad for this role, um, I would encourage you to put in that introductory paragraph, I am a recent graduate or I'm a new graduate of Brock University, um, and then continue on with your content. Otherwise, it's a preference choice if you wanted to just put, I am a graduate of Brock University, if you don't want to add that you are a new grad, um, that's up to you. But I would encourage you if they are saying they're looking for a new grad to include that in um, just because applicant tracking systems and what employers use to review um, a large number of applicants all at once might be pulling some of those words there. So it's great to match some of the language that they have in the job posting to what you would have in your cover letter. So the introductory paragraph, that's going to be the first paragraph. We talked about having four on our cover letter. Uh, so the second paragraph is that body paragraph. Now this should create the desire for the employer to read more about you. And we mentioned here that we don't want to rehash our entire resume on our cover letter, but in this section here, you want to include what are some of those highlighted skills that they're looking for. So from that T analysis that Victoria talked about, what are some of the top things the employer's talking about? Maybe pick two, three maximum and discuss them further in this body paragraph. You can go into more detail about the experiences that you've had, ensure that you're writing in that um, car statement format to really tell the story um, from the experiences that you have in the past. Um, this is a great way to highlight those skills that are, um, found on your resume and get them to dive a little bit further into what you're presenting. Uh, so you can see here for the response outline. So if the from the T analysis and from looking at the job posting, you discover that they're looking for somebody who has customer service, customer service experience. Um, you can see here that the skills, customer service, your experience is written there um, and then the accomplishment. So that's more that result driven component. You want to place the experience and accomplishment really on that cover letter to highlight better that skill that you have. Um, and like we said, pick two to three um, to highlight on your resume be, or your cover letter because you do only have that single page. Um, but this is going to want to entice me to look further into your resume and see what other experiences that you might have. And then for that statistical analysis, you can see here that the experiment uh, the experience was a research assistant. Um, I can see that on your resume. What I'm really focused on is what that accomplishment is. Um, so you can be very vague about the experience that you have, but focus more on those results and those accomplishments. So that way I'm more intrigued to go look at your resume and, and learn a little bit more about the skill that you have and this experiences that you do have. Now, the bo second body paragraph, this is going to be paragraph three, to not be confused. Uh, this is going to be where you highlight your research for the organization. Now, you want to talk here a little bit more about why you feel that you're connected and aligned to the business and what you can provide on more of a broader term. So this is connecting more like your values, um, why you're interested in that industry, rather than the specific role or why you're interested in that organization. Um, some examples of what this might look like is if you have um, an organization that you know has a work culture that you really appreciate, or maybe it's connected to an industry that you want to know more about or you want to learn more about, that's where you can discuss that portion. Um, I tell a lot of people who come to my office that this is the heartstrings paragraph. This is where you really want um, the employer to feel that you're connected and that you have a lot of passion for the work that they do and that you can align with what the organization is looking for. Um, so relating that information about the employer back to what you have to offer. If you're somebody who is very compassionate and maybe this is an IT job in healthcare, you can talk about how your compassion connects to the healthcare industry and how you want to work to support the mission of that organization. So um, this is a little bit more flexible. You can choose to include this paragraph if you wanted to go to three uh, instead of four, but this is what might help set you apart from other candidates applying for the role. Um, and this paragraph is, I believe, most captivating um, and enticing an employer to look further into your resume because um, I get to know you rather than your experiences. 
And then finally, that fourth paragraph is going to be the concluding paragraph. And this is where you want to include a call to action and restate how they can connect with you more. So we thank them for reviewing our application. Um, we invite them to connect with you to discuss your qualifications further. And then we state how they can connect with you. So just including your email and your phone number again in that bottom paragraph. Um, that's a great way to ensure that the employer knows how to connect forward with you um, regarding if they want to connect with you about an interview or they just have some clarification questions um, about your uh, resume and cover letter. I'll pass it to Victoria to talk about some writing tips. Thank you. Yeah, so when we are writing your resume, um, one of the big things we want to think about is using, avoid using words such as think, believe, or feel, and demonstrating confidence in your cover letter. Um, we want to make sure that the um, employer knows that you, um, you have the skills and you know that you have the skills and qualifications um, to, to excel in that position. So we want to make sure that um, if we, we want to say, I think we change that to, I am certain, or that you are positive and confident. Um, it really changes the voice of your cover letter and uh, demonstrates that you, you do have the skills um, that they're looking for. So making sure that that cover letter piece, um, as much as it want, is a reflection of you and you want to include a little bit of your personality um, so the employer gets to know you, you want to make sure that it also um, exudes that confidence piece in there as well. Um, and here we have an example of what the cover letter format looks like. Um, starting with the header there, um, if you take a look at that, you'll notice that it's actually consistent with the header that we have posted for our resume template. Um, and that is for that consistency piece. And it also allows the employer to know that this belongs to the same person um, as the resume does in case things do get um, lost, if it is a printed copy um, or, you know, it just gets uh, ch changed online or, um, you know, lost in, in different folders. Um, but we also want to include the date that you are submitting the letter, um, if you know the individual's name, their job title, providing all of that contact information there, and then the person that you're addressing it to is that um, is would be included there in the uh, salutation. Um, yeah, and then everything that you would include below, all your paragraphs are very clear to read. Um, depending on the style of the cover letter, it might change if you are included in bullet points, um, but this is mainly the the resume template that we see most often and that is um, able to highlight your skills and qualifications in the most clear and concise way. Um, yeah, that concludes um, you know the the cover letter portion there and uh, we'll answer any other questions that are um, still out there. But before we get to that, we would just want to uh, talk about some of the resources that are available to you via the Career Zone portal. Um, so if you are looking to book an appointment with uh, myself or Sam, um, I am, uh, yeah, we are able to do one-on-one -on -one appointments um, where we can just uh, dissect the job postings um, for the job that you're applying to and help you work through that T analysis um, and kind of give you the skills to be able to navigate those um, in the future. Uh, they, we have online workshops that are running. Um, if you need more information on cover letters and resumes, or if we have employer events going on, you'll be able to see those through the Careers on website as well and sign up for any of those. Um, any events that are taking place on campus or online are listed on Career Zone and most importantly, our student resources. Um, this slide shows what that um, homepage will look like. So if you are looking for um, 
you know, uh, some resume and cover letter help um, or additional help, you'll be able to find that in our cover letter and resume resource. There we have that broken down to checklists and guidelines that are available to you, um, both for resumes and cover letters, any additional writing tips. Um, but some other things that I'd like to highlight for you um, would be the um, degree exploration guides, uh, which are actually found in the Explore Careers tab. Um, so if you want to take a look at the degree exploration guide for your specific program, it gives you a list of possible degrees you might be or possible careers you might be interested in, um, any further education or professional association, and it also lists a lot of skills that you would have graduated with um, or develop throughout your program, which are great to include on your resume and cover letter. So it kind of gives you um, some information there as well. Uh, any quick quick tips um, if you are looking to um, do informational interviews with any professionals or um, are looking for just quick information on, um, you know, getting there's things like dining etiquette, sorry, that are included there. If you are doing networking events, that's something that is good to note. And then we also have um, further information on interview preps and postgraduate studies. So this um, information here is all available through Curazon and it's uh, filled with great resources that are available to you students and postgraduates. So yes, if you are, oh, sorry, Sam, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, if you are looking to connect with us, um, the uh, Goodman alumni would reach out to um, to Sam, and uh, I am available through uh, the career at brocky.ca um, uh, email. And um, yeah, if you're looking for any uh, questions, advice, and feedback, we are here to help with that, and um, yeah, to help you the best that we can. Awesome. So we'll take the last couple minutes uh, that we have here today to answer some questions. So um, there was a question from Brittany about uh, adding an experience that maybe you have not yet started to your resume. Um, what we would say is that if you have not completed work in a specific role, maybe you were hired for, but you haven't completed any work towards it, I would exclude it from your resume um, because you wouldn't be able to discuss any of the tasks that you have worked on. However, uh, you can mention in a line on your cover letter, if you please, um, that you have been employed by the university in this sort of capacity, or you can leave that to discuss um, in your interview if you get invited for an interview. Um, but that's a good question. And then there's another question in the chat here. For cover letters, is it okay to use a company header and footer uh, for your current job when you're applying for new employment? So you want to use your own um, document. So Victoria had mentioned not using any templates that are out there. Um, and we don't want to use any company headers uh, because that is property of an organization. You want to use your own um, because you are advertising and marketing out for yourself. So that's where we create our own header um, for all the documents that we are creating. And the cover letter uh, should be limited to a single page. We just want to be short and captivating. Like we mentioned earlier, it's not a rehashing of your resume. And so you can get a lot of content in on a single page um, and ensure that uh, you're not going over. Just choose the most captivating pieces or the, the most highlighted skills. And anything past that, you can always discuss in an interview. Um, you don't have to put everything onto your cover letter. But we would recommend a single page for cover letter. No problem. And if anyone else has any other questions, please feel free to pop them into the chat. Or as Victoria mentioned, you can connect with us through email as well. Um, if you have any maybe more lengthy questions or something that you want to discuss um, outside of the, the conversation. But we're very happy to be presenting with everybody here today. Um, and even if you are an alumni, you can still connect back with um, us. We are very happy to work with you and, and help you in that employment journey.
No problem. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And again, you can uh, reach out with any questions that you might have uh, to either goodmancareer.brocky.ca if you studied in a Goodman program 